Hi, my name is Neil. I'm a real-life architect and this channel is about the reality of altering and extending private homes in the UK. Now, I am a fan of Colin Furr's YouTube channel. I've been watching his antics for years. If you don't already know, Colin Furr's is a plumber from England with almost 12 million subscribers on YouTube. Colin designs and builds gadgets and contraptions, each one more mental than the last. His channel isn't just entertaining, it's also informative. You don't often see things being manufactured these days, which is why I love watching his videos with my two boys, so they can see how things get made. Back in 2015, Colin Furrs built an underground bunker in the garden of his suburban home. An actual underground bunker. In 2021, he uploaded a video showing his plan to connect that bunker to his house using a secret tunnel. To date, there have been 15 videos in the series, with over 150 million views between them. Colin's videos are really entertaining. I mean, how often do you see someone doing anything like this? But, while watching Colin's videos, I kept asking myself, does, does he have permission to build this? Well, in his most recent upload, Colin addressed this question. He discussed how he got planning approval for the tunnel. The trouble is, there are two problems with what Colin has done. First, he got his planning approval retrospectively. Second, he doesn't yet have building control approval. If you are uncertain about the difference between the planning system and building control, I've made a video explaining the difference and I've put a link in the description below. In simple terms, the planners are usually concerned with what a building will be used for and whether that use will impact the neighbours or the wider community. They don't care about things like insulation or structural steel. That is what building control are interested in. The technical stuff. I'm not making this video to give Colin a hard time or to provide him with professional advice. I'm doing this to help people understand how the system works. So let's look at the first issue, getting planning approval retrospectively. There isn't anything wrong with doing this as such. The planning system does allow people to make retrospective applications. My issue is that Colin Forrest has almost 12 million subscribers, and I'm guessing a lot of them are in the UK. The worst thing that might happen here is that people might follow Colin's example and build something first, and then worry about the applications later. But it worked for Colin. The truth is, Colin Furs rolled a dice here, and he was lucky it worked out for him. Other people might not be so fortunate. I always advise clients to apply for permission before building anything. To be fair to Colin, he isn't an architect, and he isn't giving people advice. But his last video, about getting planning approval, has over 3.5 million views after just four days. Because he has such a large following, it's possible that someone might think this approach is normal, and it really isn't. So why did he do it? Well, Colin gave two reasons for not applying for planning permission before building his tunnel. First, he didn't want people challenging him about the tunnel project until after it was built. And second, he wanted to figure out the size, depth and layout of his tunnel as he went along. He didn't want to be restricted by having to follow a predetermined design. Now, from a professional point of view, Neither of these is a good reason to build first and get approvals later. Even if you apply for retrospective approval, your neighbours will still be notified and can lodge objections. If you don't get approval, planning departments have legal authority to demolish any illegal structure and then send the bill to you. So applying afterwards doesn't stop people from objecting, and it raises the stakes considerably. Colin's idea that following drawings would be too restrictive also doesn't stand up to scrutiny. The planners don't usually inspect buildings afterwards. They only do this if there's a complaint and someone suspects a new structure hasn't been built to the approved drawings. Precise dimensions will only matter if the proposed structure is built near sensitive locations such as the neighbour's boundary, and it is possible for structural and construction drawings to use generic information. Take this engineer's drawing from one of my recent projects, for example. It has drawings showing how the timber frame walls will be built, how the existing drains will be protected, and how the foundation slab will be formed. It doesn't give the exact location of these elements, it leaves it up to the builder to use their own judgement on site. When the builder finds that existing drain, they have a generic construction detail to refer to so they can form a structure around the pipe and protect it. In short, it would have been feasible for Colin to have drawings produced before starting construction and he should have applied for planning permission before starting. Like I said earlier, this isn't Colin Furr's area of expertise, and he isn't trying to give advice on how to navigate the planning system. 
I just want people to make sure they understand he took a massive gamble and it really wasn't necessary. The next issue I have with Colin Furr's tunnel is the fact there doesn't appear to be a building warrant or building control application. Again, it is feasible to apply for this retrospectively, but he really should have done so before construction began. It would be so much easier. Now, I was able to find Colin's planning drawings online. I am not going to say how I did this, as I don't want to be responsible for giving away Colin's address. He blanked out that info on his video, and I've done the same here. For the record, these drawings are freely available in the public domain if you know where to look. Maybe he built that bunker to hide from the crazy people on the internet. I also looked up the building control records for his property, and I can see he has not yet applied for a building warrant for the tunnel. Interestingly, he did apply for a building control approval for the bunker back in 2015, although he described it as a bomb shelter, and he also applied for a new roof to his garage in 2018. What this shows is that Colin Furs is aware of the building control system, so I presume he is going to make an application in the near future. The trouble is, it will require more than just the approval of the council to get this signed off. Because the tunnel interacts with the foundations of his house, they will almost certainly require a structural engineer to certify the new structure. There's plenty of footage showing how Colin made his tunnel, but if the engineers decide the steel is too thin or the concrete not adequately reinforced, they may decline to certify that structure. That is just one way his building control application could be refused, and I've seen this happen to people. A few years ago, a friend of mine asked me to help out one of his mates. The guy was trying to sell his house, and the surveyor from the bank noticed he had changed the upstairs layout to add one more bedroom. The problem was, he never got building control approval for this. He contacted the council, and they had a look. They told him he needed to make an application for building warrant to cover the new work. This is when I got involved. The guy thought this would be a paperwork exercise, fill in a few forms, and have me provide the drawings. Simple, right? Wrong! When I went to the house, it was immediately apparent the corridors were barely wide enough for me to walk down, and the new bedroom had split an existing window with the room next door, so that both bedrooms got natural light. The building regulations set a minimum width for corridors at 900mm, unless passing a radiator where it can reduce to 800mm. This guy's corridor was 600mm, or 2 feet at the most. 600 mils, 2 feet. The regulations also require that a bedroom have a window at least 1 15th the area of the floor. So if your room is 15 square meters, you must have at least 1 square meter of glass. By splitting the existing window, neither room had sufficient natural light. When I explained this, it took a minute for the penny to drop. But eventually the guy realized he had to get the builders back to rip out the new partitions he had formed and return the property to its original layout. He tried to argue with me that the new partitions he had built were really sturdy, and I'm sure they were, but that wasn't the point. The building regs look at more than just structure. At a minimum, I think Collins Bunker and Tunnel could be classified as ancillary storage, much like the attic or garage in most people's homes. Just because you can put a bed in your attic does not make it a bedroom, at least not legally. If Colin Farris can get an engineer to certify that tunnel, he will probably be okay. But let's ask the obvious question. What would it take to make his tunnel and bunker fully, legally habitable? Probably quite a lot. For starters, it will need a proper stairs, not a ladder. That stairs can't be some fold-away contraption. No, a proper, permanent stairs. Then the bunker needs natural light and ventilation. There are also issues around escape in the event of a fire. It may need a window or door leading to the outside, not back into the house. It will also need to be insulated, and this might be a massive undertaking. The only practical way to do that now is to line the inner walls, ceiling and floor with insulation, which will reduce the space significantly. In short, I think Colin should stick with getting approval for this as a storage space, at least to begin with. So what would happen if Colin Furs didn't bother to get a building warrant approval? Well, the first issue may be if he tried to sell his house to someone buying it with a mortgage, which is most people, just as my friend's mate found out, the bank will send a surveyor to check the house, and if the appropriate applications have not been made, the bank will probably not agree to secure a mortgage on that property, and the sale will fall through. The other issue that might arise, and I'm speculating here, is if a serious incident occurred at the property and Colin had to claim on his home insurance after a fire, for example. 
If a loss adjuster from the insurance firm noticed the tunnel didn't have building control approval, they may use that as a reason not to pay out. I hope this deep dive into the vagaries of the planning and building regulations has been useful. As I said, I love Colin's channel, and I don't intend this as an attack on him personally. I'm sure he will get all his approvals, and this video will be out of date before long.